Goon Wars! It's patch 3.0.17. It's time for about 10 new cards to enter the meta. Man, these new cards are getting added in quick. We're going to have the full Genesis set, I think, before any of us are really ready. For a while, it felt kind of slow, but now it feels like it's happening so quick. So let's get into it. Let's review the new cards. Let's react to them. Let me get my camera a little bit small. Actually, I think I can click on it, right? Even better. Okay, here we go. Card number one, react time. Pumpkin cage, four attack, five health, fire creature. It's a rare, and the text says, at the end of your turn, discard a random card from your hand. If it's a fire card, deal two damage to all characters. What's interesting here is this is one of the... It's one of the most consistent ways to discard cards. I mean, there are cards that let you discard a bunch of cards at once. I think Marilyn's Curse discards your hand or something like that, right? But as far as discarding a random card once per turn, I think this is the only card in the game that does that. Consistently self-discarding. Problem is, that's generally one of the worst things you can do to yourself. So it would only be used in a discard deck... And I think one per turn at the end of your turn randomly, it's probably one of the more uncontrollable high variance discard effects in the game. Now the fire card deal two damage to all characters is actually pretty interesting. That is a way to do AOE damage possibly over and over. But again, you're not choosing which card to discard unless you have one card left in your hand. You're getting a lot of card disadvantage, losing cards compared to your opponent. And then the two damage AOE, you know, it could hurt you as much as it can help you. And doing that once per turn at the end of your turn, it's also going to damage Pumpkin Cage itself. It's just hard to see how is this card going to be used in a way that's actually good. It's an interesting combination of effects, but I have a hard time imagining how you would use it. So I'm assuming this card will be very hard to play. It probably won't see play. Even though it's really interesting, I just don't really... If there is a good deck for this card, I'm not seeing it. Discard Fire is not a thing at all. I mean, maybe this is the very beginning of eventually having a Discard Fire archetype. But yeah, interesting card, but it doesn't seem like it has a home. It's so inconsistent and such a weird combination of effects. I'm not sure. Probably not very good, although fun to talk about. Next up, Huestas, if I'm pronouncing that right. Earth Creature, 2 attack, 5 health. Insult. And then War Cry, give all Earth creatures in your hand plus one HP for each friendly Earth tile. So Earth is the biggest value deck in the game in, in, insofar as you're going to have a lot of creatures on the board, a lot of cards in your hand a lot of the time. And so Huestis is able to give that buff to cards in your hand. The thing is, if you have, I don't know, four or five Earth tiles or more, this could be a huge buff. This could be massive. Then you combine this with, uh, oh man, what's it called? Wormers, which doubles the health of all your creatures on the board. And there's a chance that Earth decks can build some truly huge boards that I don't know how you get rid of. Maybe you have to start running more lethal stuff like Dildo or whatever else is out there. It's going to be really hard to handle Earth decks when Huestes juices them up. But the thing is, it takes a long time to get there. You have to play a lot of creatures to set up your Earth tiles. Then you also need a bunch of cards in your hand to receive the buff, because this is going to buff cards in your hand. So it's a long time and a lot of work to set this up and get big value. But I think even if Huestes is only able to target and buff, not target, but buff like a couple cards in your hand, even like one or two creatures, if it gives them a big buff, it could still be really powerful. I think this probably becomes an auto-include in most Earth decks, unless it ends up being too slow. But it's also a 2-5 insult, even before the War Cry. Considering that water, you'll see Leaky Fridge played sometimes, it's a 2-7 uh, insult with no upside otherwise. But I think Huestis is going to be very playable. It's decent just in terms of stat line and insult. And then the War Cry value... Even if you get like medium value, could be really impactful. I think this is a very strong card. Next up, Unicarnage. Electric creature, four attack, two health, rare. And then Warcry, if you control four or more electric tiles, 
give all friendly electric uh, creatures plus two attack until end of turn. That's crazy. This is an alternative win condition or an alternative combo piece for Sapien Charge, which is another card that can give plus two attack to all your friendly electric creatures. You're always within the first four or five turns, almost always you're going to have four or more electric tiles. Electric decks have no problem getting lots of electric tiles, especially with Umar, who can be, you know, returned to the hand and played again multiple times. Like electric tiles are not hard to get. And 4-2 is also a decent stat line considering how much upside this card has. If this card, I'm actually thinking this card is probably too strong. This card could be a 1-1 one, one, and it would be playable. If this card was 1-1, one, one, it would be playable. So 4-2 is, is a pretty generous stat line. Uh, this is insane. I think electric decks are just getting like way stronger. It's really feeling like water decks are staying at the same power level, the one turn kill water stuff, whereas electric decks just get juicier and juicier. I mean, it just makes you want to play more electric. It's like, do you go earth or do you go electric? Because they both got something big and they're kind of butting heads with each other. Uh, electric does not have a good way to get through West is though, because all that health will soak up all your attacks. So it's it's interesting. It's interesting dynamic. I actually think water decks will do better against this kind of stuff because you can use uh, 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 what is it called? It's it's escaping me, but the card that lets you bounce their creatures back to their hand. Expired goods. Expired goods is going to be good counterplay against this Earth stuff. Unicarnage electric decks will be harder. Still, this looks really strong. It, this is really strong, and Earth is like the only deck that can stop it. So I think it's going to be Earth versus Lightning, and then Water beats Earth. So we're getting the Rock, Paper, Scissors starting to form with Fire kind of existing outside of it. Earth beats Lightning. Water beats Earth. Lightning beats Water, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's a stretch, but interesting. Rodent Portal. I've been looking forward to this card. No idea if it's going to be good. It just kind of makes me laugh. It tickles me for some reason. Rummage for a fire creature, then set its attack and HP to 2. The thing is, you're only getting a 2-2, two, two, so you're relying on the uh, the effect of the card, but fire does have a lot of synergistic effects. Then you can also use Magma Dom to send whatever you rummage back into your deck when it dies. So will it get enough value? Is rummaging fire creatures that only get 2-2 two, two of stats a useful thing to do? Needs testing. I'm thinking it might not be good, but it's just some reason, I don't know, I find it like a really neat card. It's a neat card, and the art's kind of fun. Now, this one is much stronger, though. Earth decks, I think, are really looking juicy right now. Sundew. Rummage for an earth creature, it gains plus 3, plus 3. I mean, just compare these two cards. They both rummage for a creature of the element, but this gets plus 3, plus 3. This one gets set down to 2-2, two, two, usually a nerf. So, Sundew seems incredibly strong. Uh, yeah, the only thing is you're not getting a specific creature. You have to rummage, so there's some inconsistency, some RNG. But still, like that also means you get to pick a creature that could be useful after you see what deck your opponent's playing, after you see how the early game goes. So you can also use the information you get and let this be more of a decision-making card where you get options. So Sundew, really strong. I mean, both Huestas and Sundew are must-runs, I think. Earth deck just getting stronger uh, by the patch. Button Dweller is a neutral creature, 2-2 two, two rare, and it says whenever you play a creature, give it plus one attack. Really simple card. Um, I think... I don't know if this would work... It says whenever you play, not whenever you summon, so I'm guessing this wouldn't combo with Rise of the Robots. But this might combo with... I mean, it combos pretty well if you burst damage from hand in any other way, so maybe you play multiple pounces, or maybe you're doing a water combo. I think this could fit into the water one-turn kill deck a little bit... a little bit better than Lightning. Again, assuming Rise of the Robots doesn't combo with this. Because this plus one attack on your water creatures can help you get into range where Boris the Vodka Shaman is able to double you into lethal damage range, whereas otherwise you might not get there. Maybe playable in a water deck. Maybe playable, I don't know, maybe in a sugar high neutral deck, because then this can get buffed by sugar high. Maybe in a sugar high deck. I think this is like a C tier type of effect. D plus to C. Like It's not super strong, but it might have some situational uses. It's a cool card. I like it. It's it's simple. It's nice. It, it'll be interesting to see if that sees play. 
I love this patch, man. I just uh, each patch is bringing out cooler and cooler cards. Shout out Goon Wars, uh, enjoying all these card updates. Next up, we got Lava Flow, Fire Spell, Rare uh, Rarity, and the effect of the spell is to deal two damage to a random character. Repeat for each friendly fire tile. The problem is it doesn't say random enemy character. It just says random character. And again, it says random character, not creature. So we're kind of getting into the weeds here, but this means it can hit your face, your creatures, your opponent's creatures, or your opponent's face. Uh, if it didn't hit you in the face, you could maybe just like clear their board and then play this to do a bunch of face damage, like a supercharged fireball to the face. But because it's as likely to hit you as them... It's probably not going to see play. It's just so inconsistent. But there is, like, the Giga Chad play of clearing the board completely with seven fire tiles and just playing this and just <coughs> YOLO. You know, hope for 14 damage to the opponent's face. <coughs> I just don't think this is playable uh, because it's the, the fact that I can hit you and your stuff just as easily as the opponent. The time this is playable is when your board is empty and their board is full. And maybe that's enough. That just occurred to me, right? If you have nothing on the board and they have, like, a bunch of creatures, maybe. But it's very situational. You also need lots of fire tiles. And, again, it's still random, so it's still inconsistent. I'm just not seeing this as playable. It seems like it's, it's just too inconsistent. All right, this one. Tea time. Isn't this the one that everyone's trying to find a shiny? Like, it hasn't been opened yet? Is the, Maybe I'm mixing it up. I feel like people are looking for this shiny. This art just... <laughs> oh my god dude anyway tea time it's a spell it's a common neutral spell your opponent cannot attack next turn both players draw a card end your turn it's actually a very interesting potentially powerful effect and a one-of-a-kind card nothing else like this in the game right now your opponent can't attack next turn that's actually incredibly strong both players draw a card and then you immediately end your turn so that's a little bit of a downside they get to use their card you don't get to use yours right away I think denying the attack for a turn is just going to be a useful thing, especially considering that it cycles itself. I think this goes into a lot of control decks. So, uh, you know, control earth and maybe control fire. It doesn't go in aggro decks, but I, even who knows? Th this is a bit of a wild card. I need to see this in action. I need to play with it myself. Already looking forward to Friday's Goon Wars stream, and I'll get a chance to dig into all these new cards in the ranked ladder. Which, I mean, I'll probably be playing off stream before then, but we'll really get to dig in on Friday. I'm curious. I don't know. I assume it's fairly strong in a control deck. But this could be a really strong card. I'm actually quite curious. Uh, I have a bad feeling I'm going to have to watch this tea plate get tea bagged by the teacup. Uh, looking all grotesque. I think it's going to be a, a regular visual in my Goon Wars life because that's, that's an interesting card. All right, we got, what, two more? And then there's one interesting uh, 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 gameplay change we'll talk about after this with the MIA effect getting a bit of an adjustment. So first off, let's talk about this. Bloody Shrimps, 1-5 Insult. And the war cry is if you played a mystery card this turn, summon two 1-5 Shrimps with Insult. So I believe that's in addition to the one you played. So you get three Shrimps in total. Getting a bunch of Insult on the board I think is quite strong. You've got Schrodinger's Cats, which has been a little bit less strong than I've hoped because, like, you need to have a lot of tiles open in the mid to late game. So Schrodinger's Cat has been a little tough to get value from. I haven't really seen it working super well. It also just dies to any AoE. This might be a better card for that kind of thing where you're getting a bunch of insult on the board because the high health is really the key. And I don't know how... How is Sugar High worded? Because in theory, you could get two more shrimps on neutral tiles. Would they then be uh, impacted by Sugar High? I won't waste time looking right now, but that might be interesting because then you could turn two of them into three sevens. It depends if Sugar High is only based on the tile or if it's based on the type of the creature itself. There might be a little sneaky Sugar High synergy for the two other shrimps that don't trigger a tile type change. This seems like it could be strong. The big catch is you just have to play a mystery card, and that is fairly situational. Um, a lot of decks, most decks don't run a lot of mysteries, but I tend to run an average of like three mysteries per deck. I don't always run three, but I like to run three and then I run Sly's mystery in a lot of decks for that extra draw, extra deck thinning, as well as card advantage. So 
I think in any deck that is running three mysteries with a size mystery package, this is probably playable. I'd put this in the needs testing category. I'm not actually sure how strong that's going to be. And is it going to fit into one turn water deck, one turn kill water? Like, maybe it's too defensive, but maybe it's good because it will buy you more time to get to your combo. I mean, it's definitely not an aggro card, so probably not. But, yeah, I'm curious. I don't know. Maybe we're moving into a world where there's, like, another water build and not everyone goes for the blob and the uh, Boris and all that. Lastly, for the last card, before we talk about the MIA change, we got Fish Time. Summon a 2-2 fish on each empty, friendly water tile. It's a little bit weaker than the Earth version that summons a 2-2 Earthworm for each Earth tile, but if it's a full tile, it'll still spawn it on a different tile. This one, the water tile specifically needs to be empty. It's a subtle nuance, but like needing the water tile itself to be empty as opposed to just needing any other tile does make this a bit weaker. Also, just with the way water plays right now, this doesn't seem very helpful because water decks usually want to kill you all at once. They don't even really worry too much about doing damage. Like electric decks will do some damage along the way and they'll build up their tiles along the way. Water decks are really just trying to finish you with one god slap. They're not trying to wait and like do a little damage here, a little damage there. They're trying to slap you down. So I just don't see Fish Time getting any play. I think it's going to be a really weak card in the current meta. Maybe in the future we'll come back around and, and find it to be more useful in a new set. You know, some of these cards, that's part of the fun. Who knows what a new set could do to recontextualize some of these. Very, very cool cards. I hope I have all these. I'm worried that I might be missing a few. I got to go buy some stuff. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention. You guys can read through all the, the nuances of the little fixes, but this is a pretty big one here. MIA effect, cards that have MIA, so MIA2, in case anyone, if you're watching this video, you know what it does, but yeah, just in case anyone needs a reminder, if we play a card that says MIA2, for the first two turns on the board, it is uninteractable, it takes up a tile and doesn't do anything, and then after the two turns is up, it flips over, and it has summoning sickness on that third turn, and then you can finally attack with it on the fourth turn, so MIA is a very slow effect. Uh, there are a few playable MIA cards, notably Stone Golem, but others like uh, uh, the 7-7 Slug Life with Barrier or the 10-10 Traveling Edme, they both have four MIA. They never get played. Really, uh, Mevthar is the only MIA that gets played super often with Stone Golem as a second. This is interesting, though. Now it says, so it used to be if the MIA card joined the board from anywhere, it had MIA. Now, if it enters the battlefield from somewhere other than hand... If it gets summoned randomly or resurrected or anything, I don't know what's possible now. This might be more of a future-proofing change, but now if an MIA card enters the battlefield from some other way other than being played, MIA does not happen. So if you get an Edme and it's not coming from your hand, if it's somehow summoned in some other way, it would just be a 10-10 on the board in your opponent's face ready to, you know, ready to go. Ready to go. So this is very interesting, and it's good. I do feel like MIA... With the exception of Mevthar and maybe Stone Golem, MIA cards tend to be too weak. Uh, Beersaurus maybe gets played. I feel like part of the problem is MIA cards having summoning seek, uh, sickness when they wake up. So an MIA 4 card can't attack until the 6th turn after you play it or, or whatever. It's like that extra turn, it flips over on turn 5 and then you attack on turn 6. It's so fucking slow then again it's also one of the only costs that cards can have because there's no energy cost so mia is like another cost i think this change is good i think honestly we probably just need to print some stronger mia cards more stuff that's like mevthar that has an effect when it flips or even more extreme versions of stuff we have i don't know if that would be a good idea but like make an edme but it's 15 15 i don't know what it would take you know uh, Edme is one that's close to mind. I was trying to run it in the neutral deck, and it was just so rough. It just never, ever, ever got value. Uh, so this MIA change seems pretty cool. But yeah, what do y'all think? Let me know. What's your favorite card from the new drop? What's your least favorite card? Getting close to the conclusion of Genesis set, which is super hype. Goon Wars just doing lots of good stuff and continuing to be an incredibly fun game. Jump in the queue. Play some games today. I appreciate y'all, and that's all I got. So, uh, wow, that was a long one. Holy sheesh. All right, Flux signing out.